Glory to Jesus. This is the hope of the church, right? That one day we'll be together with the Lord in eternity. Amen? This is the desire of our soul. I would like to greet everyone that are here with us and also those who are on YouTube also. I want to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the church, those who can, to stand up. And we're going to read the Word of God in the Gospel according to John. John chapter 7, verse 37. John 7, 37. John, Gospel according to John, chapter 7, verse 37. Those who don't have the Bible, it's here in the projection. It's on the wall here. Can you hear me? Amen. John 7, 37. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus, Jesus stood and cri cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Hallelujah. Church may be seated. My beloved, there are things that the human beings they are not able to live without. Right? Things that they are fundamental for their subsistence, which is food. The person that does not feed, they will get sick quickly and they will die, right? The water. The person the human body is constituted by about 70%. 70% is water. 70% of our body, of our matter, is water. And this water has to be every day. Yes, to have a supply of water because you work, you sweat, you end up losing liquid. And if the person loses too much liquid, that person falls into a state which is death. A person can have a, a death in their organs, the kidneys. Why do we have a kidney stones, the pain that nobody can withstand. The men of men cry like a child. It's the lack of water, the of liquid. You go to the doctor, a urologist, and he asks, are you drinking liquids? Water. And 
there are those waters, then there is even a brother here. They make a, an advertisement to Lucas. He has, there are medicinal waters filled with minerals. Everything that the body needs. They have magnesium. There is sulfate. There is substance that through the water you are, are able to ingest and then you feed your own body. A person can live a week, even more, depending on the situation, depending on, on genetics of the person. A person can live without solid food, but without water, with four or five days, that person enters into a state of delirious, delirious state. Try it. In Florida, this sun, very searing sun, you can we can stay without food. Sometimes you're not even hungry when there's, there's a lot of heat. Your body wants water, liquid. When you get to a hospital, dehydrated, the first thing, look, put um, a s water into his body, inject water into his body, and a person is strengthened. The doctor doesn't say, okay, give, give uh, a plate full of beans, he's so weak. No, it's the water, it's a liquid. When you put a liquid into your body, there is all this substance that the body needs. I'm not even taking into account that the entire earth is composed of, there is more water than dry land. Water, whatever there is water, there is life. There on the northeast of Brazil, a dry area, they had to bring water to that place, taken from a river and bring it there. Now, whatever you, you sown, it sprouts because there is water then. What is life? Is life for the plant, life for the animals, life for human beings. And Jesus is the water, is the water of life. Jesus is the water that quenches the thirst of the soul of the afflicted. The soul of the ones who, which, who are delirious, the soul of the ones who are sick, they need need of this water of life. This water that when the Samaritan woman, when she came to the well of Jacob, Jesus came also to the well. He asked this woman, woman, give me something to drink. And she said, Lord, I don't have a vessel with which to take the water. It's difficult to take the water without it. So then Jesus told the woman, Woman, I'm going to offer you a water. And this water that I'm going to offer you, you will never be thirsty ever again. You will never need to go back to the well. Because the water that I'm going to give you, it flows to eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus is the water of life. 
That's why it says here on the last day of the feast, the great day of the feast, the feast of Pentecosts. The word says that Jesus' brothers went ahead of him going to Jerusalem and Jesus went afterwards because he didn't want to uh, be noticed. He went pretty quiet because this is the characteristic of the servant of the Lord. Right? He went there as a servant of the Lord. Jesus went there without calling attention to himself. But during the service, he, he came later on. You can go ahead of me, and then I'll go, I'll get there. And this feast would last a week. The feast of the Pentecost. Jerusalem was all there, all the nations. The people would go there to Jerusalem to celebrate that feast. There were, there were ceremonies. There are many events, religious events, a lot of movement of the crowds. And Jesus was there in that context, looking around, looking the crowd going to one side and then going to the other. Now we're going to have an event all the way there on the temple. The main temple. Let's go there. Well, the highest priest will be there. And then the crowd would go there. And Jesus was just looking the movement of the crowd. But on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and says, Who thirsts Come upon me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let, it, let him come to me and drink. In other words, until then, none of it had been filled the emptiness, emptiness of the souls of those who were there. Because they were there fulfilling a religious tradition was a religious custom. But when Jesus, on the last day, Jesus said, when he says, if I know thirst, let him, come, let him come to me and drink. Because man, man tries to quench the thirst of man's soul in their own religiousness, in the philosophy, right? In their advices. Sometimes, and the drugs and addiction, the vices and drunkenness, but they always have to come back to the well. And that Samaritan woman, that, that was her life. Every day she had to go back to that well. But on the day in which she try, tasted of the water that Jesus gave to her, she no longer thirsted. And the world is leaving. Is leaving their, going through their own, their last celebration, their last feast. The world is leaving. Their last moment. But Jesus is revealing Himself. Jesus is placing Himself, standing and saying, "Who thirsts?" Come upon me and drink. 
the afflicted there in Isaiah, Isaiah 41, 7, 17 said the fallen, the afflicted and needed sick water, and there is none, and that tongue is dried with thirst, but I, the Lord, will hear you. I, the God of Israel, will give you help. I will open up rivers in places and high places and fountains in the middle of the valleys. The Lord is opening it up. The word of the Lord is being proclaimed. The word of the Lord, which is water, the water of life, is being proclaimed in the valleys, in the high places. Because the Lord is, has, is in a hurry of, to save men. Because the great and last day of the feast is coming upon us, is arriving. And the Lord is rescuing the afflicted and the needy. That's why we, that's why we are here. We are not here because we are better than the ones that are out there. It is because we are more needy than the ones out there. Because the, the ones who are needy that need the Lord. Jesus said, look, the healthy, they don't need doctors, but the sick, the afflicted, the needy, But I, the Lord, will hear you, I, the God of Israel. I will never let you down. Not at all. Isaiah himself said, Can a mother abandon her own son? Well, today, nowadays, <laughs> impossible. Sometimes you see videos. The cat picks up her, her puppy with uh, the cat's mouth. Bring the cat and hide the cat, the their offspring. Sometimes the animals they're teaching to us how they how much care they have to their offspring. The dog, when the dog has uh, puppies, you cannot even come close. The cow, if, if the, a cow has a calf, you cannot even come close. This is the instinct that God placed in the animals. But we, men, we are rational beings. We don't need instinct. Instinct. And the Lord was showing this. The Lord was showing a mother that has go facing in her home a situation regarding her children. And many times, she, in that moment, which the blood boils up, she prays to the Lord. She's been praying to the Lord. She's seeking the Lord, asking a blessing for her children. She's asking the Lord. She knows that the Lord can operate, but whenever the blood boils up 
she forgets that the Lord is, is working on her behalf. Then it enters human reason, enters man's boldness, and the word of the Lord there. And James, James 1, James 1, 20 says, Because the wrath of man do not operate the justice of God. You prayed. You asked. But you didn't trust in the justice of the Lord. You angered. It was that moment in God was going to operate, entered at wrath. So the, the word says, because in man's wrath, God does not operate his justice. So if you trust in the Lord, that he is the water of life, that he has the power to manifest, to operate, trust trust in the Lord. Use the weapons, the spiritual weapons. Now, bringing the service to a close, then this woman, the Lord was telling her that tonight the Lord is giving you the fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control, or depending on the version of the Bible, speaks of uh, calm and other self-control. So the Lord is giving you the means. Wait on the Lord, and you will see that God will, what God will do in our home, because what God does, He doesn't do, doesn't do halfway, and He doesn't do it uh, in an imperfect way, imperfect way. God does His work perfectly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whoever thirsts, come upon me and drink. Jesus stood up and cried out, saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless us through this word. And the Holy Spirit also, well, the Spirit is going to continue to speak to your heart, to my heart, through this word. Amen. Let's continue praising the name of the Lord.
The Lord also gave a vision, a man that he has been seeking. He's digging many wells, seeking for water to quench his thirst. But every well that he digs, he finds water, muddy water, muddy water. You know what muddy water means, spiritually speaking? The clay speaks of man. It's so it's water. The water that mixed is the word of God that is mixed with human philosophy, with human reason. You know, remember that servant of the Lord, Gideon. He was he was working the wheat on the on the wine press, not on the threshing floor, because the threshing floor was pretty common for you to work the wheat on the threshing floor. And then the enemy would come, the Philistine, and they would take the food from Israel and take it away. So then Gideon had this revelation, my wheat, I will work it inside of the wine press, inside the, the rock where you, you step on the grape to make wine, showing that the word of the Lord, when it's, when it's worked inside the wine press, mixed, well, when it worked on the threshing floor mixed with human concepts, it is not the revealed word, but when the wheat is worked on, where they make the wine, the, the taste is different. The taste of the revealed word is different. It, they are able to find, the word of the Lord is able to find a place in our hearts. So this man is like this, he's digging, seeking, but tonight the Lord is presenting himself to him like crystal water. And when this man tasted of this water, he was amazed. Blessed be the, be the name of the Lord. I just want to make a small correction. The brother that I was referring to was not Elias, it was Lucas. He's not here because he sells uh, uh, water with a perfect pH and he imports from Brazil. So we has, have come to the end of the service. Jesus is standing, crying out, whoever thirsts, come upon me and drink. This is the last day of the feast. It's going to come to an end. All of it will come to an end and the church will be raptured. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. I'm going to pray for the Lord. I'm going to pray and then Pastor Mello, John, John de Mello is going to give the apostolic blessing. Lord Father, we praise you because your word is being a strong food for us. It's been the water that has quenched our thirst um, before this world that is out there. Blessed be your name, because your word, Lord, is a power so that we may break the battles, the trials, uh, of our daily lives during the thirst we seek your word and you have quenched our thirst blessed be your name in the name of Jesus Amen the church I would like the church to remain standing The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Superintendent Consolation of the Holy Spirit be with everyone now and forever. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. You may sit down, and if you still desire a prayer and a clarification, remain where you are, and we'll, we'll be going towards you. I'd like to remind the church, tomorrow the service is at 3.30, uh, the service about doctrine, and it's a Sunday school, and service at night is 7.30. Amen. Soon after the assistance, there is a meeting with Group A. Group B today is free to go, according to Brother John there. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.